Hello everyone, I'm RP Spartan, and I'm finally here with my third and final crossbow guide. Today we'll be covering some revisions from the previous guides, accuracy points, the zeroing points on the entire site, stealth potential, and anti-vehicle properties. The last two chapters were the hardest to test, but the data was well worth it. With our short and sweet introduction out of the way, let's get started. Starting off with some revisions to the other guides, I have some corrections and clarifications I need to make after more extensive testing. First, let's clear some things up in part 1. I claim to have stated all three special bolts are the same accuracy and velocity. This is false. The thermite and gas bolts have an identical velocity of 126.8 meters per second, while the fury bolts are slightly less accurate and have a lower velocity of 116.7 meters per second. They perform similarly enough when equipped with other attachments, but the difference is noticeable when testing them individually. On to the next correction. I was uncertain on why players weren't dying outright from the explosive bolts while being downed. I can confirm with 100% certainty the EOD perk stops you from dying from the explosion while down from the impact. Another correction, during my first accuracy testing, I stated the iron sights were less accurate than the 4 powered scope. This was actually due to the 4 powered scope having the apex stock which improved aiming stability. The iron sight test had no attachments equipped, while all other tests had the stock equipped. This reduced the idle sway that would make for tighter groupings compared to the iron sight that relies on stability. The iron sight test had no attachments equipped, while all other testing had the stock equipped. The reduced idle sway would make for tighter groupings compared to the iron sight that relies on stability for accuracy, since you cannot hold your breath. Also the 200 pound arm does not actually improve accuracy. This was again due to the increased aiming stability. Now in part 2, there was only one small error I found. In chapter 3, the zeros, the 50 meter zero on class 2 using the 4 powered scope is actually the third dot. And that's all for revisions. As promised from the last video, here are my accuracy plots in detail. I tested the accuracy of several crossbow setups to show how attachments influence accuracy. I tested 5 classes, 4 of which are from my previous video, and fired 15 shots each time, and plotted each impact mark. I had the 4 powered scope equipped, my weapon mounted, and held my breath for each shot to make sure aiming stability was not a factor. This was done at medium range at exactly 50 meters, which I would consider the normal range for the crossbow. Obviously, increasing the distance will only decrease the accuracy, so missing at this range will look far worse at 100 meters and beyond. So, explaining the target a bit, a player's head is almost exactly the size of the yellow bullseye, as you can see here, which we will consider a headshot, and a player's body fits the width of the orange circle. The red circle is somewhat close to where the arms would be, but may be a miss depending on how the target is moving, and teal is considered a miss, or possible legs and or outer limb hit. Starting with class 1 that has no attachments, we can see that the general spread is good enough for consistent body shots. Occasionally a few limbs will be hit, but the important thing is that the grouping shape is diagonal and mostly accurate enough to hit headshots. Class 2 matches the same diagonal shape of the default crossbow, but with a much worse spread, which means headshots will be hard to consistently hit while body shots are still reliable. I adjusted the plot to be better centered since I fired slightly lower than the center, and we can see how some shots will fly above the target or horizontal enough to miss entirely. Class 4 is by far the most accurate. This is due to the 16 strand cable, and the velocity is increased drastically with the 200 pound arms. This was so accurate I could not actually count all 15 holes because many of the shots landed within each other. All the shots are guaranteed headshots, and this accuracy continues out even to 250 meters, which demonstrates just how accurate this setup is. Class 6 is slightly less accurate than the previous build, but all the shots are still guaranteed headshots. It retains most of the same accuracy over range and can still headshot at 200 meters, but it is safer to aim for the torso. Lastly, we have Class 8, which I see a lot of streamers and YouTube guides recommending. I equip the 28 strand cable, 200 pound arms, and the fury bolts. I hear so often how velocity matters more than accuracy because velocity equals more range. This is absolutely false. At 50 meters, we have another diagonal shape, though flipped in direction. I adjusted the plot so we can get a better center, and as you can see, there is a lot of horizontal inaccuracy. Even at 50 meters, you have about a 50% chance to hit the body, a 33% chance to hit the head, and everything else will most likely be a complete miss due to the shape, which will shoot down left, which is under the arms, or top right, which is over the shoulder. 
Be warned, after 100 meters, this setup is painful to use, and you will be lucky to hit anything at all. So don't use this setup unless you plan on keeping your fights 25 meters or closer. And if that's the case, you can drop the 200 pound arms for better ADS attachments. So with that out of the way, we can move on to the zeros for long range. In this chapter, we will extend the zeroing distances to the entire site. This part will be much faster than my previous video, since at ranges as long as these, only two classes can hit this far reliably. Class 4 and Class 6, which both had the 200 pound arms and 16 strand cables equipped. The only difference is equipping the Fury Bolts. Again, feel free to take screenshots at any time to use as a reference. Hopefully these can help you hit consistent shots beyond 100 meters, making those pesky sniper glints disappear. Starting with class 4, the edge of the mid-range site is out to 200 meters. The exception to this is the VOK, which has an eye cup that obscures more of the scope, resulting in one less visible zero. When we switch to the 4-powered scope, this scope gives us a larger sight picture, meaning the edge goes out to 250 meters. Class 6 is 50 meters less for each site. The edge of the mid-range site is 0 to 150 meters, and the 4-powered scope's longest zero is 200 meters. And with that quick chapter out of the way, we can move on. In this chapter, we're going to test the sound of the crossbow compared to a suppressed Car 98K. I chose this gun because this is a very common and made of marksman rifle. I thought I'd test the crossbow against a gun from the same weapon class instead of the HDR, which is much louder. The most common question I see is why would you use a crossbow over a sniper rifle? My answer is usually because the sound is different, but now I want to see if what I claim is objectively true. We're going to test both weapons at different ranges and check the sound profile and compare our findings. I tried to get three shots from each weapon, but sometimes I would have to edit out a shot that was interrupted by background noise, such as plunder announcements. If it wasn't obvious, I would highly recommend headphones to get the most out of this test, so listen closely. The colored bars you see are the highest log of power the graph would display during the sound of each shot. This would give us some visual representation of how loud the sound can be. However, hearing the shot yourself will give you a better idea of the pitch and echo the shot makes. I'll quiet down now and just let my results play. As we tested the sound, I noticed the Car 98K was still audible from 150 meters. However, the crossbow was not. It turns out the crossbow at 121 meters becomes inaudible, and taking a slight step closer to 120 meters, we can hear the crossbow again. This means the exact distance the crossbow can be heard is 120 meters. Now we move on to the tracer visibility test. I tested each type of shot to see how visible each bolt is compared to the tracer and vapor trail of the Car 98K. Something interesting I discovered about tracers is that it seems the tracers and vapor trails aren't fully visible each shot. 
In fact, they were the most visible every other shot. This means I'll be displaying all three images to show you all of my findings. As you can see here, the Car 98K has a bright tracer and typical vapor trail in its most visible form. However, with the normal crossbow bolt, we can see that it has no tracer but a vapor trail for some reason. I really don't understand why since a crossbow isn't hot enough to... Yeah, you know what, never mind. We're moving on to the thermite bolt. With the thermite bolt, we can see how bright the burning tracer is, and this is obviously visible from a distance. And with the flaming tracer, it is not only extremely bright, but also leaves an obvious smoke trail in place of the vapor trail. Now for the fury bolt. The red light can occasionally give you away, but this bolt suffers from the same visible smoke as the thermite bolt, although the light is not as visible as the constant flaming bolt. Comparing the visibility of each of these shots, we can see visibility is a weakness for the special bolts. In contrast to this, the sound of the crossbow is much quieter, and the standard bolt is much harder to see, meaning the basic crossbow is perfect for stealth. The basic bolt damage is not the best for Warzone, but this can definitely work for ground war. And with that out of the way, we're going to move on to utility and the anti-vehicle properties. In this chapter, I want to focus on how well the crossbow can be used for a utility row and acts as a strong anti-vehicle weapon. I want to compare the fury bolts and the backburn bolts so you can understand some basic differences. First, damage. With full armor, both bolts will down with a hit anywhere. Both bolts will automatically down with a headshot with the impact, and the after effect will kill them while down. However, if they have EOD equipped, they will survive. There are some other major differences between the two, so let's cover them. Starting with the Fury Bolt, the Fury Bolt does a total of 327 damage to the chest after the explosion, which is 2 seconds after impact. A headshot will result in a total of 489 damage, and it has a velocity of 116.7 meters per second. The Backburn Bolt does a total of 173 damage to the chest after burning, which lasts 4.1 seconds after impact. A headshot should result in a total between 353 damage and 370 damage based on data comparisons. I haven't tested this personally, I just cross-referenced some data and made some estimations. It also has a velocity of 126.8 meters per second, which is higher than the Fury Bolts, but slower than the default bolt, which is 137.4 meters per second. With my testing, other than velocity and accuracy, the Fury Bolts are better in every way in terms of damage and time to kill. If you use the right setup, there is very little reason to pick the Thermite Bolts, ever. Now I want to pause it here. Some stealth changes occurred at some point during Season 6, and I believe the Thermite Bolts received a damage multiplier buff against killstreaks, and the Fury Bolts received a damage multiplier nerf. The number of bolts to destroy and attack chopper have changed since the last time I tested earlier in the season. I'll talk about it in further detail later on in this section. Just keep in mind, with the new data, there is a viable reason to use these backbird bolts. In my experience, the 4 seconds of burning feels like a lifetime and that is plenty of time to shoot back, which will get you killed. Starting with some utility strategies, both bolts are a counter to riot shields and will result in a down as long as you stick the shield, even if it's on their back. The benefit of using the crossbow over a launcher is the crossbow is considered silenced and can hold 40 shots in reserve, while launchers can only hold 6 in reserve. As for flushing people out, the Fury Bolt deals roughly 110 damage at a player's feet. The Backburn Fire deals roughly 90 damage over 4 seconds at a player's feet. This fire damage is not even enough damage to kill a player without armor. If fired consecutively, it would take a minimum of 3 bolts from either to kill indirectly. If you are firing Fury Bolts non-stop at a person's feet, it would take roughly 8.8 .8 seconds to kill with full armor. If you use the Thermites, this increases to 9.6 seconds. Keep in mind, this is calculated without EOD, which I am positive will increase the time to kill. Another amazing use I found for the crossbow is for the Warzone Attack Choppers. For the Warzone Attack Choppers, they take 10 Fury Bolts to shoot down. During my original testing, it only took 6 Fury Bolts, but that has since increased. As for the Backburn Bolts, it takes 7 to shoot down, and this value has stayed the same since my previous testing. I believe this data implies the Fury Bolt damage multiplier was nerfed for the choppers. Next up, I was surprised how well the crossbow could handle Juggernauts. I know everyone is tired of seeing them in Warzone, and rightfully so, so I went and tested this on Juggernauts in Warzone during live games. This was another test in which the values changed for me over the season. Juggernauts actually have 1,500 health. I got this value from comparing shots to kill in Warzone and adjusting the Juggernaut health in multiplayer through the Onslaught game mode. 
After testing both types of bolts, shooting the chest will take 6 fury bolts to kill, with the 6th bolt killing on the impact, and it takes 5 fury bolts to kill once the burn ends. Examining the damage from both bolts, we deal around 20% of the Juggernaut's health each shot we hit, which is a ton of damage, especially if you're working as a team. Now shooting the head will take 4 shots from the Fury Bolts and 3 from the Backburn. We can see this is a very effective way of stopping a Juggernaut, and you should always aim for the head when possible. After adding stopping power, the Fury Bolts take 5 chest shots and 3 head shots, and the Backburn Bolts take 5 shots to the chest and only 3 head shots. We can see stopping power definitely helps, especially with our headshots for the Fury Bolts. Now how well does the crossbow work for taking out vehicles? Well, surprisingly well actually, it is a great anti-vehicle weapon. It takes some skill landing the shot, but it's worth it. It even bypasses trophy systems so no vehicle is safe. I tested both the thermite and explosive bolts to see how many it would take to destroy each vehicle. Starting with the weakest vehicles, the number of bolts to destroy is the same for both types until we get to the large vehicles. The ATV only takes one bolt, the Rover takes two bolts, and the SUV takes three bolts. Now we start getting into the differences between the two. Helicopters take three Fury bolts to destroy, while it takes three Backburn bolts to disable it, and four to destroy. Trucks take five Fury bolts to destroy, while it takes five Backburn bolts to disable it, and six to destroy. The key difference is that you will have to reload, and not only that, while the vehicle is disabled, it does give a person the chance to jump out. I want to take the time to thank a Reddit user named Alphine, or Alpha1, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, and they asked, how does this compare to the Rytec AMR? Well, after some testing of the explosive and thermite rounds, I can actually show you how these compare to the Fury Bolts. So starting with the ATV, both ammo types will destroy an ATV with two shots. The Rover takes three explosive rounds, while it takes 3 thermite rounds to disable and 4 to destroy. The SUV takes 5 explosive rounds, while it takes 5 thermites to disable and 6 to destroy. The helicopter takes 6 explosive rounds, while it takes 6 thermites to disable and following the pattern, 7 to destroy. The truck takes 9 explosive rounds to disable and 13 to destroy, while it takes 9 thermite rounds to disable but only 11 to destroy. The truck is the only instance which the thermite did better and I'm not 100% certain, but it may have to do with the thermite burning time combined with the disabled vehicle countdown timer. With all this data, I conclude that the crossbow is better at taking out vehicles only if you can hit them, so it's better suited for closer ranges. The Rytec does have the clear advantage of velocity, being able to hit vehicles much easier at a range and a 5 round magazine and a decent fire rate. This makes up for any missed shots unlike the crossbow, which a missed shot will drastically reduce a vehicle's time to kill. Another advantage for the Rytec is as a team, you can fire multiple shots into a vehicle and destroy it very quickly, while the crossbow is much harder to coordinate shots together. But overall, if all shots were to hit, the crossbow wins in being an excellent medium to close range anti-vehicle weapon with better ADS and damage per shot. Before wrapping this up, I just want to let you all know, I stream on Twitch and right now I'm going through the Dead Space Trilogy, as well as playing Phasmophobia. I'm still going to make crossbow videos, but this is going to be the last crossbow guide for Modern Warfare. I absolutely love using bows, crossbows, and other niche weapons in games. I'm looking at you, Hunt Showdown. So keep an eye out for those videos. I'm figuring out if there's any other niche weapons I can test for Modern Warfare, and if you have any unconventional weapons, let me know in the comments and I'll see if it's worth making a video. Also, I just want to remind you, this is an art channel as well as gaming, and I do plan on revisiting that since I haven't uploaded a lot of art. I have some Dark Souls and D&D art videos incoming, so just bear that in mind. Okay, back to the video. Wrapping this up, we can see that the crossbow can hit reliably up to a range of 250 meters if kitted correctly, and if you know the weapon well enough to aim beyond the sight, you can hit targets even further. Stealth is certainly a reason to pick the crossbow, as it has the visibility advantage, although the special bolts have a disadvantage in this field. The crossbow clearly has the sound advantage versus any sniper rifle, and produces no sound after 120 meters, which I found amazing. Your target will have no clue what hit them if you fire beyond this range. As far as utility, I find the explosive bolts are better to use all around as an anti-personnel and anti-vehicle ammunition, since that is a more common encounter than juggernauts or attack choppers. However, in plunder, or focusing strictly to counter killstreaks, the thermite bolts definitely have the advantage. And with all that testing out of the way, this concludes my Modern Warfare Crossbow Guide series. I want to thank you all for supporting my work, and I hope you learned something today. Be sure to subscribe and check out my other links in the description if you want to stay updated. I hope one day in Warzone I'll be killed by another crossbow user. Maybe this guide will make that dream come true. 
Good luck and happy hunting out there. There's a car going towards him. Oh my god. No fucking way.